Welcome back to Logic and Set Theory. In this video, I am going to show how we are going to use the precedence of logical operators in constructing truth tables. But before that, let us recall the different rules in which we can determine the truth value. For the negation, it's simple. If P is true, then not P is false. If P is false, then not P is true. For the conjunction, we just have to remember that there is only one case that the conjunction is true. That's the case when both P and Q are true. For the disjunction, there is only one case that it is false. That is the case when both P and Q are false. Okay, let me just change it to black. There. For the conditional, there is only one case that that is that it is false. It's the case when true implies false. There, yellow. And for the biconditional, we have two cases when the biconditional is true. That's the case when both of the propositions involved are having the same truth values. So we have true and true, false and false. There. If we have the compound proposition, not P and Q, we might wonder what does this mean? Is it the negation of the conjunction of P and Q? Or is it the conjunction of the negation of P and Q? So we have to make use of the precedence of the logical operators. You can even find that in page 11. Remember that the negation must be evaluated first, followed by the conjunction and disjunction, and the last one would be the con conditional and biconditional. So going back to this example, what are we supposed to evaluate first? We have to evaluate this one first. We have to determine the negation. So we can have parentheses for that. And, of course, after the negation, that would be the conjunction. So, the correct interpretation would be the conjunction of the negation of P and Q. So, this one is not equivalent to the given example. But, the second one is equivalent to the first. Now, let's construct the truth table for the given example, not P and Q. So, we have two statements involved, P and Q. That is why we have four possible ways to determine the truth value. We have true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. Next, we have to evaluate the negation of P. Let's have a column for that. It's very easy. All we have to do is to write in here the opposite of the given truth values for P. So we have F, F, T, and T. Next, let's evaluate the conjunction of not P and Q. So let's have here a column for not P and Q. So, what's the conjunction truth value for F and T? That's F. False and false, that's false. True and true, that's true. True and false, that's false. So, this is an easy way in constructing the truth table of a given compound proposition. So now let's have a more complicated example in constructing a truth table. We have here the implication of P implies Q and not P implies R. So we have P, Q, R. So three statements. So as you can see here, I came up with eight possible ways of determining the truth values. Why eight? Because there are three statements. So we just simply multiply two times two times two. And we get the product 8. And remember why I multiplied by 2? That is because each statement has two ways in which we determine the truth value. We have true and false. So the first row in here has all true uh, statements. And in here, we have only one false case. 
So one false, one false, and one false case. And for the next rows, we have only one true case, true, true, and true. And the last one, all false cases or false statements. So for us to find it easier to evaluate this complicated proposition, let's have not P first. So not P, all we have to do is to negate this. We have false, 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 true, 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 false, and true. Next, we evaluate P implies Q. After that, we will evaluate not P implies R, so that the last column would be intended for P implies Q implies not P implies R. Okay, now we focus on P implies Q. For P implies Q, remember that there is only one false case, and that's the case when true implies false. Let's look for that particular case. Oh, this one, true implies false. This one should be false. Do we still have some more? This one, this must be false. And the rest must be true. Easy, right? So true, 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 and true. So six true cases. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two false cases. Next, we focus on not P implies R. Not P is located here and R is located here. So we have to look for rows in which not P is true and R is false. True implies false. This one, true implies false. So this one must be false. This one is also true implies false. That must be false. And the rest must be true. There. So six cases wherein we have true statements and two false cases. And the last one is our desired compound proposition. And now we have to look for the case where true implies false. Here. True implies false is false. True implies false is false. And the rest will be considered true. That's it. So this is the truth table for the given compound proposition. All we have to do is to apply the precedence of logical operators. And remember that, e that we evaluated the negation first. And then we have also to evaluate those that are inside the parentheses before we evaluate the conditional truth values.